Well, hello. Is this Alice Thrills? Excuse me, sir? I'm looking for Alice Thrills, baby. Excuse me? She seems mighty fine. No, you have reached Alice Have I reached Alice Thrills? Excuse me, sir. This is Alice Kills, not Alice Thrills. Alice Kills. Alice kills people. And you've called the right number for her to come after you. Alice is going to kill you now. Alice is going to kill you. Welcome to 31 Days of Horror. I am Morgan Film Fan. Let's jump into some scares. Alice Kills is an independent horror movie that was released in 2011 and written, edited, and directed by Jay Lee. Now this is a psychological horror exploitation splatterfest, if I were to categorize it as something. So basically what we have going on here is we have this woman named Alice who is best friends with this other woman named Carol. Alice works in basically the uh, account managing uh, industry and she doesn't like her job very much but she's really close with this woman named Carol and after uh, work basically on weekends and such they like to go to alternative clubs where you know alternative punk uh, rock bands play kind of thing and they like to drink and they like to party and they certainly like to do drugs and Alice is a very uh, timid um, seemingly shy, but um, I wouldn't say awkward, but definitely very uh, giddy and um, innocent acting, you could, you could say. You can tell this girl's got a lot of spunk to her, and she certainly has um, a type of, conf of confidence, especially one that comes out when uh, Carol is around. And Carol seems to be more of the leader type and the, the girl who makes more of the decisions kind of thing. Uh, what happens one night uh, that they are taking uh, ecstasy and partying on the rooftop of Alice's building is um, they start to <laughs> um, party a little bit hardy, I will say. And during their intoxication, they start to, uh, you know, say stupid shit, do stupid shit. And uh, Carol ends up mentioning um, that Alice is a bit of a single white woman, I think she puts it. And uh, this kind of sets Alice off. And then Carol is right on the edge of the building. You can see Alice slowly crawl up to or walk up to uh, Carol. And you get the idea that she's going to push her off. But I like one thing that this film does a lot. And it kind of uh, jump cuts from scene to scene. And it does this in this rooftop where immediately as she's walking up to Carol... It cuts to Alice lying on the floor, and at this point, Carol is already at the bottom of the building, seemingly jumped, and um, you can tell that Alice was involved in pushing her, but uh, it doesn't necessarily show you whether she did or not. Um, and throughout the film, Alice starts to purchase drugs from the same drug dealer that sold her and Carol um, ecstasy. I don't know if she dabbles in just some stronger and heavier stuff. However, she starts to get addicted for sure and starts to do more and more suggestive things to get her hands on these drugs. Slowly but surely, Alice starts to lose her mind heavily. Now, this film goes very interesting with this. Um, it doesn't give clear reasons or clear moments to when Alice starts to or begins to lose her mind. You're not quite sure if Alice was a ticking time bomb or if she had some violent moments in her past. These things are not too much explained, but you definitely start to learn that at the very least, Alice got a little bit nutty and something in Alice's mind certainly snapped after the death of her best friend. And she deals with many things, including addiction, but you get the sense of grief, but she doesn't deal with grief in a 
natural way whatsoever. Her dealings with grief get very bizarre. There is one scene involving Carol's funeral, after she murdered Carol in the hospital, by the way. And uh, at this funeral, um, she starts to get a little frisky with the body, I'll just put it that way, and people are like, what the serious fuck is going on here? <laughs> as, as, I, as I was when uh, watching this scene. The drug dealer character is um, one for the books himself. This guy is nuts. I feel like a lot of scenes in this film were certainly improvised, the way they were directed, whether they were or not. If they were completely scripted, then the performance, the performers obviously uh, did exactly what the director was looking for. However, it did feel like uh, a lot of the characters were bantering off of each other during some of the scenes, including lots with the drug dealer and lots with Carol and Alice's banter on the rooftop. This film also takes its time on going bonkers because it saves everything pretty much for the last 15 to 20 minutes. There also isn't that big of a body count. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's lots of people massacred to death, but it's not as big as I was thinking. I was thinking 20 plus. It's definitely more conservative than that. Um, and it doesn't give you everything all at once. And it definitely takes its time to get to the serious brutality, when, which when it does, let me tell you, there's one character in particular that has his entire insides completely spilling from his stomach. So it is extremely brutal. It's also kind of hilarious in the way that uh, this film was directed when she's trying to dispose of the body, let's just say it's this woman's first time, and I'm not talking about sex, by the way. And also involving that strange sex scene with this guy named Kurt, who calls himself Curtin as a nickname. It's some Bugs Bunny reference or Bugs Bunny joke that kind of went over my head because I haven't watched that cartoon series for a long time, but the lines that come out of this guy's mouth and how this guy can possibly get laid, I have absolutely no idea. He's this macho uh, buff dude that, let's just say his source material on learning pickup lines, I would never buy. <laughs> just throwing that out there, curtains. Just throwing that out there. This film is also shot in a very interesting way. I like the cinematography in this film a lot. It definitely has this European flair when it comes to the cinematography. It almost gave me vibes of a Gaspar No film, with the shots and camera angles specifically, as well as the lighting. Certainly not its direction or the way that the story and plot built, not at all, but visually I definitely got a little bit of Gaspar No vibes. Definitely also felt a little bit like how a typical action movie would be shot if it was going straight just for the action set pieces and such. However, obviously this film sticks to horror and brutality and does a really good job with that. However, I really found the lighting interesting. Lots of close face-up shots, one with the drug dealer in particular. There's a few shots that show his eye directly to show a little teardrop underneath his eye because there's this little plot twist that uh, involves him killing his brother when he was a teenager. Very disturbing stuff. I won't get too deep into that. Pretty sick plot points uh, come about with this film. And the actors and actresses definitely were told to give it their all because they take their performance to level 10s. Alice isn't the only one that's crazy and absolutely nuts in this film because like I said, this drug dealer, who I'm forgetting his name, I think it was like Rex or Ren or something like that, he's in that job and he'll dive into these very random monologues about, you know, it's, it's you or them when it comes to this world and uh, if you don't kill first, they'll kill you, which is one of the catalysts in what set Alice off in the first place, which kind of took me for a loop because I was watching this scene and in this monologue from this drug dealer and I was like, how did that set Alice off? She seemed to definitely snap after Carol's death, but her motive to go on her killing spree essentially didn't seem super earned from me, but I think that was the point of the film. I think the whole purpose of this story is to display a woman absolutely going batshit insane with not the clearest cut reasons for doing so, which I found pretty interesting, I must say. The actress who plays Alice also is a very gorgeous woman, but unfortunately my tastes are not very much for women who mutilate men's bodies in the kitchen. So 
I will have to pass on Alice. Thank you very much. It's a wild film that, albeit some black comedy being sprinkled here and there throughout the film, it definitely sticks to this its horror and brutality and exploitation elements. And I really liked that the film stayed there and I really enjoyed how the film is shot. Like I said, it definitely had that really dark, grimy European cinematography that I had a good time with. And uh, I think it's a fantastic, independent piece of cinema for sure and definitely an underrated gem because I have not heard of this film at all other than probably one or two years ago so I'm glad I got the chance to check it out I'm glad I picked it for 31 Days of Horror. I think it's a pretty sick and brutal little gem. So that is day four. Thank you very much for joining me on another edition of 31 Days of Horror. And until next time, subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you'd like to listen to my voice or if you like my film reviews. I will be back with more soon. Stay tuned for day five. Check out what's on the channel already. Stay tuned for what's coming. Until next review, have a good one. Take care and cheers.